Alright everyone, welcome back to another scrolling through the feed video. I have a few topics I want to talk about, but I feel like the main topic I want to really get to is this whole completionist charity fraud drama. Or I shouldn't say drama, it's actual like charity fraud considering... I, I just don't know, just after watching uh, Mudahar's like interrogation firsthand, I haven't seen the other guys, that uh, like the co-investigator with Muda. Uh, like video or anything like that if he does have one but I have seen uh, pretty much Muda's side I've seen uh, the response and uh, I've seen uh, then Mudahar's I guess response to the completionist response and it just doesn't go anywhere which is really surprising especially when all like you have to do to refute the claims is just kind of like show I guess like whatever receipts you need to, but it's just kind of like playing up your, like, mom, like, your, the reason that you made it for your mom and all that. And then all you show up is maybe like a tax write-off or just like a, just like one piece of paper that doesn't really show the numbers or anything like that or track how, like, the money's been really spent. So, I'm just... It, it just confuses me just overall just watching the video and then the OSL ended off you just kind of Say you're stepping down from the company. So it's just like, okay, so Nothing has changed uh, I, I Unless I like missed it all but like that, that's pretty much like the TLDR of like what I watched or understood from the videos or like the entirety side of it all so you know, the completionist seems to be going down in flames, and then even the community has just gone uh, completely dark. And, uh, you know, well, it's also been kind of funny seeing all the people that, you know, kind of support and or believe the completionist to begin with. They kind of just end up deleting their tweets or just <laughs> backtrack entirely, so that's also neat. So with that pretty major news story out of the way, I figured I might as well just continue a little content update considering there's not much I want to, I guess, touch base on considering, I don't know, a lot of shit's old news, Johnny Smalley is going to jail because after he, you know, trespassed in a construction site, he's going to jail and all that, same with his Twitch friend or whatever. Johnny's doing the same stupid stuff. He puts on a skeleton mask, goes to a construction site and proceeds to be the amazing comedian he thinks himself to be. I am sorry, oh, he's going in the warehouse, dog? Oh my god, Chad, what the f did I get myself into? <laughs> His black friend's like, I'm just a cameraman. Yo, dude, guess what? They have a zoom feature, dumbass. You should have zoomed in from a distance. Now you're an accessory, fool. You gotta love the black dude getting in on this. And he's already trying to come up with his alibi live. You'd think like he would bother to learn enough Japanese to go, I'm here to work, instead of just going, I'm here to work, like every Japanese person understands English. And he's going on a private construction site, which technically, if you did in America, that would land you in trouble too. And somehow Johnny just doesn't piece two and two together that this is a bad move. He then begins to start screaming Fukushima, because that does something. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. Fukushima, Fukushima. If Johnny Somali actually wanted to work, he'd have a real job instead of going to Japan and acting like an absolute jackass for a thousand views. And thus, it results in Johnny getting arrested live on stream. Hello. Hello. I just let him know I can see him. <laughs> Yo, this is... I got a drink, and he's still outside right here. Oh, whoa, even more. Backup. Backup. What's up, you guys? Hello, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? Oh my god. Huh? Passport? You need my passport? Please. I'm taking it off. I'm taking it off. Okay, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I'll take it off. 
犯罪事実について今からやむ,やむんで I gotta go guys I'm, I'm, I'm getting arrested so、uh, yeah I'll see you guys later I'm sorry this might be the last time y'all see me but peace Before Johnny was arrested, his boy Gino was arrested a few hours beforehand. Now, to show you how stupid these guys are, and I'm kind of lazy, so I might not even get it, Gino was live streaming himself talking about immediately getting a flight out of Japan. Like, if you're going to flee the country for fear of being arrested, you don't live stream it. Are you retarded? And the answer is yes. So the Japanese police and detectives snag his ass outside his little apartment or Airbnb, wherever he is. They grab Johnny. You already know the story. Basically, it's looking like Johnny's gonna do some time. Like, for real. My friends over in Japan, Thailand, etc., they all sort of gave me the rundown. Like, eh, you know, he might do a week or two, then get deported, or he could do three years. And I'm sitting there like, that's a pretty big jump. <laughs> it's like, oh, he'll be in there seven days and I'll let him out, or he'll be in here for three years. They also said that the Japanese conviction rate is over 90%. I'm not even gonna go get into that. That's a whole other documentary of crap that I already knew about. But frankly, yeah. Since it's been over a week and Johnny's made the Japanese news, Japanese news stations literally staked outside the police house where, or did it, wherever the hell he was with the police, and he's smiling in the truck waving. He don't even realize the danger he's in because he's that ignorant. Well, with that clip, you can pretty much summarize how the entirety goes. But if you also just want to see the entirety of Giant Somali and his trip to Japan, you know, I don't blame you. Because I have rewatched it multiple times over and over. Just because I'm like, how can you be this blatantly, you know, avant garde, I guess? I don't know what, if that's the correct word exactly to say, but. You're just, you're just so bold and brazen towards the people that are so, like, conserved and quiet. But, you know, I, I don't know, I can't explain it, especially <laughs> with all his actions that he's done all the way over there. So, moving on, I feel like I should also talk about the Ubisoft kind of just, like, choking at their entire situation with Rainbow right now. Considering if you know me or if you've been watching the channel for a little bit or if you just simply browse through the channel I have uh, a good amount of Siege content. I've always enjoyed the game. I love the, the practicality of it. You know, you have simple operators that have their own gadgets, their own weapons and shit. And then, you know, they also happen to be representing like the entire uh, like nations that they come from respectively. Which just makes it entirely neat. However, over the years it seems Ubisoft has turned this tactical shooter into a high speed shooter where you're pretty much more uh, pre-firing and just using all the ammo you can before you die instead of just, you know, tactfully going in there slowly, methodically, clearing whatever you need to. And it's just pretty much a gunfight with whoever, like, sees whoever first. And after seeing this, you know, recent patch notes with the new operator coming out, I was actually kind of excited to like see him like do something or like see how he'd work out, but they just kind of fumbled the bag with him. I wanted to use him for cryo damage and just slow people, but instead you're just kind of tracking people's movement with it and stopping、uh, tactical gadgets with it, which is a real shame. Along with the small side note that you can no longer cook grenades anymore, only reducing the skill ceiling that it takes to like participate in the game. So now, instead of well timed performed grenade kills that you can cook and throw at the enemy wherever they are sitting or where you spot them with your drone, you simply have to throw your grenades in there and hopefully that they take out another gadget. So, and don't get me even started on the, you know, bugs and all that that they still literally haven't fixed and all that that keep popping up whenever they decide to, you know, add more dog shit to their title. And before, you know, I hear the argument, or I think of the argument as I say that. It's like, oh, well, you know, why why is it so bad that, you know, the, you can't cook grenades anymore? Well, the thing is, like, when you can't cook the grenades anymore, you toss grenades into the room or whatever that the person's holding in, and then they can just get up and walk away. And even if you swing on them, you still gotta enter the room to swing on them. You can't just toss the nade in there and do damage or whatever you want. You can't just. 
fully clear the room like you want to. And even then, you, you know, you can throw it in there and then the guy's probably just going to get up and move out of the direction of the grenade. <laughs> So with that little grenade rant out of the way and, you know, old diatribe, not really needed, but I'm going to keep it in the video. I feel like it pretty much justifies like what I want to say, especially when I bring up the little picture in our tweet, a bikini body, it just, you know, tweeting, it's like, this is the worst, like, update or, like, you know, change to Siege overall. And I have to agree with them, and I'm not even, like, financially beneficial or, you know, financially reliant, um, like Siege is someone as like, you know, Bikini Body is or, you know, Jinxie. Someone who literally just like streams the game just because, you know, it's like what they do. They have, like, you know, somewhat like the game. But like, you know, playing the game for however many years, hours, or whatever it is, and then, you know, pretty much you lose your skill ceiling and then you're getting nerfed while also there are cheaters that literally are just like constantly popping up, you know. I and mean, it doesn't bother Ubisoft, I guess, because they still get money for people buying new accounts or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, with that said, I'm not going to be going back to Siege anytime soon. Be playing more of the finals, if anything. I shall catch you in the next video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and, you know, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Yeah. I just run like 10 rings while they marvel in my glory. One of the best you'll ever see. I'm just living out my story. What are the odds that I succeed? Good enough to try for it. What will it take for you to see that I will straight up die for it? Look, cause what it took for me to get to where I'm at. You need to take the weight of the world and strap it to your back. You need to flirt with death and hope he choose to turn his back. Cause once you decide on your fate, no, there ain't no turning back.